Dragon Age Dreadwolf has declared alpha, and I've seen two kind of takes on the internet. One, that means it's coming out right away, which isn't true. And two, alpha is just a checklist and doesn't really have any particular meaning, which I would argue is also true. Let's talk about what alpha means for Dreadwolf and what we likely will see coming from them in the near future. So the take that alpha is just a checklist is at least partially true. EA has a definition for what alpha means, as does Bioware. So when a Bioware game declares alpha, it is to some degree completing a checklist that consists of a combination of what EA wants to see at Alpha as well as what Bioware wants to see at Alpha. But for me, Alpha is more about the feeling on the project. This is the point at which the game shifts from starting to get ready to ship and shifts into actually starting the process of shipping. I've called it the point at which the project is open for test. What that means is now is the point at which you open up the floodgates for testing. Everything is open to have a bug filed against it, with a few pretty small exceptions that we'll talk about in just a second. Up until now, content testing has been pretty limited and isolated to individual pieces of content. You might have tested an individual combat ability in isolation. Now you're testing actual combats and actual plots and actual missions. This is the point at which an asset exists for every single thing in the game. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's the final asset. And indeed, you probably have lots of proxy models still in the game. And your lighting is almost definitely not final. And your audio balance is basically non-existent. Combat balance is just starting. So the game is far from done. But at this point, the game should be there. Everything that should exist should exist in some way. So there is a model standing in for everything that exists in the game. Every single combat ability is there in some form. Every single description at least has a lorem ipsum in place to stand in for what's going to be there. Something that I've observed on all the games that I've led is this is also the point at which the number of bugs coming in onto design starts to rapidly outstrip the number of bugs that are on programming because you're shifting from testing a piece of software into testing a piece of media. So now you're testing it as a game as opposed to as a piece of technology that will one day grow up to be a game. Again, you can start to feel what alpha actually means. It means that it starts to look like a game. Someone on Twitter, and I'll put it up if I can find the tweet again, said, it's like you are building a puzzle and you've reached the point where you've completed the outside edge of the puzzle and now you're gonna fill in the middle. And I think in a lot of ways, that's a very apt analogy. This is the game's shape and now you get to finish filling it in. This is where much of your polish is going to happen. This is where combat balance is going to happen. This is where a lot of your optimization is going to happen. Your TCR and TRCs to get you onto the consoles are going to start being tested now. Hopefully you did a lot of the preliminary work earlier to mean that you're not starting from a blank sheet of paper when it comes to what the consoles require, but this is when that testing starts in earnest. So that means that we are still a long way away from Dragon Age Dreadwolf being on shelves. Dragon Age Inquisition, it was somewhere between six and nine months between Alpha Declaration and launch. I would desperately hope that they are not trying to compress that, uh, and I suspect that they are not, for two primary reasons. One, as an industry, we are finally trying to come to grips with crunch culture and do something about it. But two, EA is in a post-Anthem world much more interested in making sure that projects have enough time to be tested qualitatively and have feedback addressed within their development cycle. I know that Gary in his blog post talked about community testing of some sort. I think that's not just empty words. I think they are going to try to figure out a way to put Dreadwolf in front of members of the community, get their feedback, and have enough time to address it. Now, I don't exactly know what community testing looks like when it comes to a story-based game, 
but that's what they're going to try to do. So what does that mean for the next little while? Well, I, I think it means that for sure, Dreadwolf is not coming out this calendar year or this fiscal year. So when we're talking fiscal years for accounting reasons that I don't even fully understand, the end of the fiscal year ends at the end of March of, of the year that it's in. So we are currently actually in fiscal 23, which will end in March of 2023. And then we will start into fiscal 24 in April 1st of, of 2023, which is confusing unless you've done this for a while, in which case that's the way you think. This game is not shipping in Q3 of FY23, which is now, or Q4 of FY23, which would be early next year. But I also suspect that it will not ship in Q1 of FY24, which would be April, May, and June of next year. For a couple of reasons. One, I think that would be still too much of a rush. I don't think that they have started their marketing campaign to the degree that I would suspect that they would have if that was their plan, though they could be going for a very short campaign. Additionally, at EA, Q1 is a largely unknown quarter. So while I do think there are some huge advantages potentially to Q1, I don't think they would be taking that risk with uh, with Dragon Age at this point, especially given the fact that they're not going to want to rush it. So I think that the reality is, is that the two potential places that they will be aiming for for Dreadwolf would be either Q2, which would be July, August and September of next year, or more likely to my mind would be Q3, which is basically right now. So basically a year from now. The reason why I think that Q3 is the most likely is that it's the one that you probably aim at in most cases if you're trying for Christmas. Q2 lets you go for Christmas as well, but at EA in particular, because it's such a sports dominated publisher, Q2 is largely drowned out by all the work being done to launch the major sports franchises, which all come out in Q2. So to be not a sports title and come out in Q2, you run the risk of being lost in the noise. So I suspect that they will be targeting Q3 of next year. That still gives them the ability to slide into Q4 if they need to. Hopefully they won't because Q4 is terrible for various reasons. But uh, if they are hitting alpha now and they haven't massaged the definition too much, they should be on track to hit a Q3 FY24, a year from now, launch. Something that I would be very curious about is part of the alpha declaration in EA is that the leader of the project, usually the executive producer, has to essentially sign a piece of paper that says, I swear to heaven and earth that this project is ready to enter alpha. I there hereby pledge this sack of coins and my political capital that it's ready to go. I would be very curious in this case who the person was that actually did that sign off. Given the communication coming out of Bioware, my guess is that it's Gary, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Depending on exactly day to day what Gary's involvement is in the project, that might push that alpha declaration more towards it's a checklist than uh, it would be if it was someone that's working on the project constantly really up to their elbows in shipping the game. Still a major milestone regardless of what the reality is under the hood and the team should absolutely be proud of it as an accomplishment. I talked about massaging or potentially forcing a project into alpha. Why would you want to do that? Well, at large organizations, at EA, being post-alpha actually unlocks a bunch of other parts of the organization. So there are cases where you might push yourself through a milestone in order to start the machinery running. The parts of the organization include the cat labs for compatibility testing. It means that this your certification testing can start in earnest. It also turns on marketing spends and things like that. So there are legitimate reasons why you might want to push a project into alpha within the organization when maybe you're not strictly ready. I don't think that's what's happening in this case, but there are cases when that has happened. Certainly in the case of Inquisition, we were not meeting the full criteria requirements of EA and I pushed it through, signed that document 
in order to start some of this machinery running. Alpha is also the point where you are largely shifting to driving the project through bugs. If Dreadwolf has been doing triage, and I certainly hope they've been doing triage for a while, now you are shifting the project from triage being part of your process to triage being most of your process. Over time, you're going to actually start closing down all of the tasks, even for things that are still unfinished, and turning them into bugs. So you are driving the entire project through one single source that is driven by the triage organization. So triage now ramps up rapidly. Hopefully they've kept their bug list in some sort of cleanly order, because if not, there is a triage of doom coming their way in order to get it into a tidy state in the first place. This declaration underlines and strengthens my belief that we are going to see something at the Game Awards in December. It's possible we might actually see something before then, but I suspect that we are going to get something pretty big from Dragon Age in December at the Game Awards. And their alpha declaration coming now in late October really just underscores my belief in that. The project has really upped its communication in the last little while, but I've been doing it in a very core fan focused way. The Game Awards would be the place where they would essentially relaunch, reannounce, and go for that larger mainstream attention. Hopefully this very quick, uh, very short video helps you understand what alpha means, at least alpha from a development perspective. Alpha from the perspective of marketing means thing that players get to test. The game is not in a state where it, they would be putting it in front of a large community presence. If they're doing community testing, which they are, it will be on a small scale with controlled, uh, very controlled walls around that testing. Special thanks to my members. They provide the resources that this channel needs to keep running. If you're interested in becoming a member, there's a link to that down in the description. Additionally, we have merch. This is uh, special for the occasion. You may now celebrate briefly quite a dark version of that shirt. Uh, if you're on the Dragon Age team, you should pick yourself up one. It's tr basically tradition. Otherwise, if you're interested in picking up some merch, there's a shelf below the video for that. I will see you again soon. Thank you.